that's an electric motor one there, which is of course knackered, the end bit's missing out it because I took it out ages ago. This is a nice basic manual one, courtesy of Luke Man, who sent me them up in the post. Thanks again, probably mentioned earlier on my clip because there's weeks apart when we're doing these things and I forget. Right, so the top guide just slides in and then we're on with the rivet. We need some rivets, that's what we need. Alright, there we go. What? I've got dual purpose. I've got the original electric window covered out the CD and now I've got the manual window cranked from the SRI. But most importantly now, I've got a window that goes up and down properly and will stay up as well. So happy days. That's another thing off the list. I just fueled the car up at the Asda at New Mains. It's 1.58 for unleaded there. The shell and the jet nearby were four pence a litre more expensive. I was getting a bit of a funny look off someday because I was filling the cannonball tank in the boot again, which I still haven't taken out. So I figured I might as well get 90 litres worth, if that's the price of it. It seems to be cheaper than anything else about at the moment. But obviously I'm going to London as well, and normally the car would make it all the way. And I was going to do like a super economy run and sit at like 60 mile an hour for a good portion of this and maybe refill it at Preston, but I honestly can't be bothered, it's too nice a day. I was going to sit at my normal speed, but we'll find out anyway going down to London because it should make it and have a little bit left in the tank. Uh, we'll soon know if it doesn't. But I've got the reserve there anyway, so I won't need to stop off and get super expensive motorway services, petrol or anything like that I'm making a big effort to not buy expensive petrol now that BP just up there at Overtown, that 169 for unleaded they do one see even though it's running on the crap petrol the fact that we've done the clutch spark plugs, just done the oil, put those new leads on it it feels super healthy right now it feels good having the 205 50 tyres back on the car as well something right up my arse in one of those big Ford Ranger pickup trucks with a massive Ford written across the front of it I'm going to bet that he can't go around corners as well as I can Van I've already passed already and there's a big Mercedes SUV up here with a woman driving it 
and she keeps having like a mad burst of speed every so often and she slows right down to below 70 then you've got to go out and pass her then she realises an old cavalier that's how things overtake them so it wakens her up and she speeds up again because who doesn't know how to use her cruise control in it that's irritating I'm not sure how our fuel economy is doing I'll stop at Preston and fill the car up again and then we'll know the petrol will probably be a little bit on the expensive side but I'm not buying that much of it so in the name of this video we're going to find out what the MPG has been sitting at this speed which is 70 miles an hour and then when I've got a bit more time I'll try and do it at 60 and see what the difference is and also I'll be doing my usual run when I usually sat about sort of 77, 78 uh, and we'll see where that comes in at this car doing 105 miles an hour on super unleaded will not drop below 28 and a half miles a gallon because of the long gears which is fantastic we certainly won't be doing that today though that was a one-off. Look, I've got the sunroof open. I mean, the sunroof always locked in the car anyway. It's just lovely to have it slid back like that instead of just tilted because it's such a nice day. I know that we're still in March and it'll probably snow next week. You've really got to make the most of this. It's a good day to be on the road. I love to get the Vectra properly fixed up. Well, I've got two Vectras and an Omega and that Astra Estate actually, all of which have air conditioning. This doesn't. The GSI does. Come on with that. I'll need to get an aircon motor sorted out okay, for one of those, in case I need to do a long run on a very, very hot day, hot weekend. I mean, I don't mind it like, I love the hot weather anyway. I'm just wear life clothes. VRS sitting on my back corner for ages. I mean, they do that sometimes on the. Sometimes I wonder if they're doing a video or something like that. I think they were. I got a thumbs up there for them. <laughs> hey, that's Vosa, as he used to be known, I think. Is it? Or is it a bomb ball? I don't know. Anyway, I wonder how much the fuel is here because it was 169 at that other petrol station, so. And it was 158 at Asda, which appears to be a good price from a couple of comments I've seen since then. Oh, I feel like sun in the top of my head. 167.9, 185.9 for diesel. I don't want to supervise. Seventeen point two seven liters. That's pretty good. We've done one hundred sixty-six miles. Walked. I did. Speed yeah, okay. I did the calculation, and on the run down here, forty-three point nine five miles to the gallon. I'm having. I'm having forty-four. That's pretty good, is it not? For an old 2 litre 16 valve sitting at a genuine 70 miles an hour, you know, that's that's not even going like especially slow or anything. Oh, an ambulance in front of me. Oh, okay. Um, here we are. Yeah, so nearly. Yeah, so basically 44 miles to the gallon using supermarket E10 petrol at 70 mile an hour on the road, Angel. So that's really good. I'm pleased with that. I say I wasn't trying to go especially slow and trundle along. I was squeezing the throttle if I needed to get past someday. And I've had the sunroof open as well. I don't know if that makes any difference to the aerodynamics. But that's just exactly what we need. I mean... <laughs> It makes it even worse to think when I took the Vectra to do that 950 mile round trip it was doing 22 miles to the gallon. 
literally using double the amount of petrol that this is at the moment. So I know it's on to the next stage of the journey. I like to break it up into sections, so the M6 down to Preston's one part, and now we've got the M6 down to the toll road, which is the next part. And this could be quite stinky, as anybody knows, the M6 is often not a nice bit of motorway, especially with these bloody roadworks, right? M56, right, that's nothing to do with us. We don't care about that. But I will just go for um, more of the same, pretty much. driving so nice, that service there, the new leads and the correct twin prong spark plugs on it and everything, it just feels spot on. I know it's a 30 year old car, but it's um, still really comfortable to sit driving the waterway, it's not rough or noisy or anything like that. Well, comparatively noisy, you get a bit of a, bit of a, a drone out that exhaust, but that's by choice, I could alter that exhaust and make it quieter. Citroen C1 just came flying past me. <laughs> I passed that earlier on there. What do I reckon? I reckon it's going to keep that speed up or it's going to randomly drop to like 60 and I'll pass him again soon. Hmm. I wonder. Of that 
pretty much for the whole of the summer months. I didn't feel well at all last year. But I feel a lot better this year. So I need to be making good use of the evenings at home, starting on that Vectra C on the driveway, see what's the deal with the timing chain on it. Never done a timing chain on one of them before, so that'll be a challenge if indeed that's what's wrong with it. The car's probably worth about 75 pence now because it'll only run in super unleaded. Road 
closure or something somewhere else. That's bizarre. Well, it's not like I can get parked right outside. to me like I can. Somebody's blocking the front with a Vauxhall mocker. Must be something to do with uh, family. Awesome, we're here. Success. 420 miles. Job done. Monday afternoon now and the next part of my journey is I need to run up to somewhere near Haddenham where I'm staying tonight and driving some daft trucks tomorrow. The MPG calculator when I filled it at Tesco for the second part was about 38 and a half which was a bit lower than I expected going on the 44 that we got but on the other hand I didn't expect to get as high as 44 in the first place so probably all works out reasonably anyway so I'm just gonna uh, trundle on up there now it's really hazy today it was cold yesterday on the Sunday which is a shame, uh, but it's uh, really humid now, which is odd for March. The coasts suggested the numerous ranges that have been discovered in Antarctica in recent years. It was obvious too that this was no slapdash creation of somebody's imagination. The mountain ranges were individualized, some definitely coastal and some not. From most of them, rivers were shown flowing. Morning. Well, afternoon. I'm kind of like hanging about on the M40. I've got an online meeting at two o'clock, then an in-person meeting at four o'clock before I can drive home. Cavalier's done 480 mile in total. And I'm still monitoring the fuel economy on it. I'm going to run it nice and easy um, across to some Morrison somewhere because I'm looking for banana yogurts because you can't get these ones in Scotland uh, and Morrison seem to sell them. So I'm going to look for them now. has happened. Look at all these Teslas lined up. Must be a good one. 12 of them there. A lot of charging points. I'm going to need so many of those going forward if everybody gets an electric car. Having said that, Teslas are so expensive that they're not exactly accessible to the majority of people. solution is to the environment, just keep driving on Vauxhalls. Oh, 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 
£1.84 for unleaded and £1.93 for diesel. Ouch. Just trying to find my way into this Morrison's. The sat nav took me quite an interesting way through a big housing scheme. And it just made the amount of old cars you see parked on driveways in the south of England. Didn't see any Vauxhalls, but there was like Hondas, Nissans, um, Mazdas, sitting on driveways, stuff under cover and things. And it makes me think I should go for a, um, a good look around all the housing schemes around where my aunties is in Sutton and see if we can find anything interesting. Because there must be some old performance Vauxhalls sitting, well I mean there'll be dozens and dozens of them across the country but the further south you go the better the climate is and the more likely the cars are to have survived intact. Well, good news everybody, we went to Morrison's, we went to the um, yoghurt section and we found Longley Farm banana yoghurts. The only type of banana yoghurts, as far as I'm aware, that you can buy on your own. And you certainly can't buy in many places in Scotland. They've got a stockist's listing on their website and the only place anywhere near me is a home bargain is right in the middle of Edinburgh. So I haven't been there yet, so anytime I come to England gonna be getting these because they're so very good what is the conspiracy here why are banana yogurts so rare you know because you get all sorts of rubbish like all these lemon yogurts and hazelnut and who even eats those and nobody wants a six pack with toffee ones in it as well but look i got ten there's nine there because i've eaten one Alright, oh, let's get across to this meeting at New Farnham. I'm using this car exactly as it would have been used as a company car 30 years ago. <laughs> meeting time to get back up to Scotland 384 miles the precious precious fuel economy too much sorry so <laughs> no we're not it's delicious it's some homemade chai tea just the word that went on the one to keep my own ass well you should yeah but it's delicious apparently my road angel is flashing up about the red x because we've got a lane closed on the inside there and it's told me about that it brought it up before I was actually upon the red X on the gantry. That's quite 
very useful. Wonder what's going on. Half a tank of petrol. Probably won't get up the road on that, we'll have to use the reserve.
thing of snow. Successful mission. <laughs> 